Hello, Andrew Cooksey here. Today we are going to install the power valve system into a KTM 200 cylinder. As always, we have our service manual here, all the pertinent pages, and no matter how many times we've done this before, it's a good idea to have that service manual right there with you. We have all of our parts cleaned up, intermediate flange, control flap, eccentric bolt, power valve axles, two of them, both with a brand new o-ring on them. We have our right and left rotating power valve axles, lifting bolt, and we have six of these roller guides, control segment, and our guide plate. All of our other parts are over here cleaned up. Loctite 242, 243 will work good too. Got the tools that we'll need, two eight thousandth of an inch feeler gauges, uh, an M7 by 1.00 tap to clean out the holes for the head bolts, five millimeter tap to clean out the holes in the cylinder for the five millimeter bolts, and uh, we're ready to get started. We'll move this piston out of the way and we'll move this intermediate flange gasket out of the way. Get the camera up here and we'll just get started. You might can hear we're competing with the thunder a little bit. We're getting a little rain, so that's a wonderful thing today. All righty, here's, here's our cylinder. First thing we do is we take the control flap. It's nice and cleaned and polished up. And we'll slide it into the cylinder like that. And we take our PV axles. <coughs> and all these parts are already oiled and with two-stroke oil and they are ready to go. The O-ring is oiled on both sides there. We run those axles in a little ways and then strictly per the service manual it says get two eight thousandth of an inch feeler gauges put one on <clears throat> one side of the control flap one on the other side of the control flap and now we gently snug our PV axles in on both sides, just gently. All right, and look at the PV axles and make sure that they are rotated in about the same amount on both sides, and they are. And the eight thousandth of an inch feeler gauges are still in place, so we pull these out. We're done with these. And per the service manual, rotate out quarter of a turn, rotate out quarter of a turn. So now the control flap is free to move up and down but it cannot slide over and contact the cylinder. So that's the objective. Okay the next thing we do is we get our eccentric bolt, a little grease on it, and we'll slide the eccentric end part way. Next thing we do is we get the lifting bolt and the, the lifting bolt has a flat on the front right there and the bottom of the lifting bolt has this piece that engages in the control flap so we're going to lift the control flap up we're going to insert the lifting bolt with the flat towards the side either side is fine and then we will rotate we will rotate the lifting bolt until the flat is visible through this hole. I just took the eccentric bolt out and so now we have engaged the control flap to the end of the lifting bolt successfully. Now we'll put the eccentric back in and it's got this pin right there on the end and this pin will engage into the groove that's in the lifting bolt. When it's successfully engaged like that I can rotate, I can rotate the eccentric and it raises the control flap up and down. Take a look at this. Dear wife says she's almost there. Awesome. Good thing. Alrighty. The eccentric bolt has a mark right here and that mark I've colored yellow. Next thing we want to do is we have six roller guides. We're going to put 
in three posts. We're going to put one roller guide on each one of these posts. And we have the right and left rotating power valves. Each one has a mark on the gear. Well, the one that goes on this side has uh, one mark on one of the gear teeth and I've colored it yellow. The one that goes on this side has a mark on two different teeth and I've colored them yellow. There we go. All right. So I'm going to point the yellow marks to the outside and up right there. And the next thing we do is we take the contro control segment. The control segment has corresponding marks. One here, one here, and two here. So install the control segment such that the marks on the gear teeth line up with the marks on the control segment. Uh-oh, we're one, one tooth off. That's why we mark them. Come on, there we go. Now can you see that? Marks lined up here, marks lined up here, and the two marks are lined up right there. Very good. Roller guides are still down there in place. Now we're going to take three more roller guides and put them right on top right here. Alright, there we go. All everything's still lined up like it's supposed to be. And now we will take the guide plate, drop the guide plate in here like this, and we'll put the five millimeter screws in place. Now, if, when I do this for the final assembly, I'll use the Loctite 242. But for demonstration purposes here, we're just going to Snug, up, snug them up a little bit by hand here. And there we go. And silky, silky, silky smooth. Awesome. Absolutely perfect. Okay. We'll put our side plates on right here that lock the that lock the TV axles in place. One on both sides. You get the picture. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll install our gasket. And then we would install our intermediate flange. So that's the way you put the power valve system together in a KTM 200 engine. It's the same for the 125, 144, 150, and 200. Thank you very much.